welcome everyone. We're so happy to be here today for this class, Optimize Your Health with New Medicine with Elson Haas, MD. For those of you who don't know Dr. Haas, he is a practicing physician in Marin County, California, but now he's seeing a lot of patients on Zoom. <laughs> and he is has written 11 books, including New Medicine, and we're really looking forward to our session with him today. So welcome, Dr. Haas. Hello, everyone. Oh, let's see, I don't need my mask with you all, as long as nobody's licking the screen. But the masking is kind of the biggest issue these days. It's a hot topic. Uh, I've seen arguments in the, you know, Sebastopol Plaza and people on, on, you know, on TV. It's just like, you know, what should we do? My son just got home from Nepal. He, he wore a mask in my house. I did too. He's been in my backyard for the last two weeks now. Uh, and uh, he's, he's clear. Anyway, we all, we all tested fine. Um, but if we're kind and considerate and, you know, it's sensible, masks do protect us. So I'm kind of a fan of if we're close to people, we wear a mask. If we're outdoors and we're more than six feet away, you know, maybe we don't need it. You know, I, I don't like it as much as most people don't like wearing a mask. But, you know, right now, this, these are unusual times. So I have a lot of stuff to go over with you today. I mean, it could easily be a four or six hour class, uh, but let's just kind of take it, take it, uh, take it on. Here we go, Angela and Angela and Neil. Great, great help. Uh, I'm really happy with this uh, PowerPoint. I think you all really like it. It's beautiful and very informative. So we're looking at how we take care of ourselves, you know, and you're going to get a similar message here. New medicine basically is about integrating the new stands for natural Eastern and Western. And, you know, there's, they all have their benefits. They all have, you know, weaknesses. And, you know, from my opinion, we're also going to look at understanding causes of disease and I'll show you some charts from new medicine and, you know, what's healing, what is really healing. And it, it has to do with our lifestyle and the keys to staying healthy. So natural medicine basically is using nature. It's foods, it's, it's, it's plants, it's herbs. Uh, food is our best medicine from Hippocrates, first do no harm. Uh, those of you who've heard me speak before, you know that my approach in healthcare is lifestyle first, natural therapies next, drugs last. So I'm always willing to try uh, more natural therapies. You know, the problem is that, you know, insurance companies will cover your drugs, but not necessarily your, your supplements. So, you know, that's an issue for many. Uh, but natural medicine is just slower. It's, it's working with your own body chemistry. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of side effects, much less so than drugs, you know, may. And there's a lot of benefits to a natural program where you clean up your diet and, um, you take some supplements and you support your, your body uh, to avoid being deficient or toxic, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, it's more bioidentical and, you know, it's been around since the beginning of time. People study the local plants, they use them, all the systems, ancient, you know, Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, um, and all that. They, they started with nature. That's all we had. So Eastern medicine or traditional Chinese medicine uh, is really a type of natural medicine working with energy um, and the pathways and the points. And uh, my son and I are in deep discussion about this, about it, because he's studying Ayurveda now and Chinese medicine and how do they align. And, you know, I mean, traditional Chinese medicine is much more working with energy uh, and acupuncture. Uh, it's really good for pain issues and energy, sleep issues. It's a way of balancing the body. It's really much more prevention oriented. And I'm a big fan of, you know, my studies back in the 70s when after I became a doctor, I said I need to learn about health and healing. I started looking at the practices of the barefoot doctors and, and really working with people to keep them healthy. And that's been, you know, close to 50 years now that I've been following that path. Uh, a lot of times you're acupuncturist, so you're going to be paying out of pocket for that. But it really is looking at the elements and seasons, and we're getting to, into that, especially with my upcoming course on, you know, se seasonal health. And, you know, Western allopathic medicine, I still practice this every day. I write prescriptions. 
Uh, but I prefer to help people heal from inside out, and we'll get into that too. But allopathy means uh, you're, you're, you're doing something opposite of the pathy as the suffering or the, the problem. So you're doing something that kills, kills uh, germs or slows the bowels down if you're having diarrhea or quickens the, the bowel activity if you're constipated. Um, we're low, we're doing things to lower blood pressure to counteract uh, high blood sugar. Uh, there's a lot more side effects to this. It's a quick, you know, it's quicker and effective. And a lot of people choose that, you know, especially if you're sick and you have a bronchitis and you've tried a few natural things and you got to, you know, fly to New York, uh, you know, on Monday morning, you know, you got to get better. So, you know, sometimes we use drugs for that. And, you know, it's a wise use of medicines that we're really looking at here and the wise use of surgery. But the strengths of Western medicine, we'll get into those, is really uh, much more for acute care surgery, for tumors, uh, for broken bones. Um, you know, we've gotten a little carried away, and I think it's a great uh, a a a advance in Western medicine is vaccinations. Uh, but it's now become the end-all, be-all for preventing disease. And I think that that's not a wise uh, way to focus, okay? And there's a lot of problems, and part of my new medicine, um, you know, follow-up is, uh, is new medicine solutions, basically, which is looking at many of the problems um, that don't resolve well with Western medicine alone. And these are weight and, you know, diabetes and, uh, you know, high blood pressure and all that. So, yeah, so here's, oh, yeah, O'Neill said, show a copy of Staying Healthy with New Medicine. It's available at a, a good price on Amazon if you, if you want to follow it. Uh, to me, it's like an, a culmination of my philosophy and approach in, in healthcare, you know, and I call it the, the, the next octave of staying healthy with the seasons, which really in, incorporated natural Eastern and Western medicine early on, although I didn't call it that then. Uh, but I, after the book came out, I said, I didn't like being alternative or integrative. So, um, and that's, you know, a word that I started using in the early eighties. Uh, and that's become a popular word now. And it means different things to different people still, but here we go. Let's go back to slides. Thank you, Angela. Okay, so new medicine is basically integrated, natural, Eastern and Western. Uh, so there's a lot more depth in there. And, you know, to me, it's important, uh, just kind of a re review of what I just stated on, on, on new, is that you want to do something simple and easy to start with. If you don't feel well, can you do things, you know, more naturally, or can you do uh, an acupuncture treatment? or even acupressure, uh, you know, which is a type of massage that simulates the flow. The idea in Chinese medicine is that if energy is flowing freely through your body, you feel well. So, you know, part of, uh, you know, disease or causes is excessive uh, in Chinese medicine. That's the external and internal harms or devils, they call them. Uh, the external is the climates. Uh, you know, too windy, too cold, too hot, too wet, you know, and the internal is the emotions, too much frustration and anger, worry, sadness. So these are the things that throw off the body energy system. So really, uh, when we're looking at causes, and I don't, you know, really in the next set of slides, uh, it's really energy gets thrown off to start with. But Let's go into this depth a little bit here. Cellular health is at the core. So I've been teaching this idea that deficiency and toxicity are the primary imbalances that, that affects our cells. When we don't have all the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty acids, um, and phytonutrients, all the normal uh, um, substances like bioflavonoids and carotenoids uh, that are in the foods, you know, which help support the body. So when we're not getting enough of those nutrients in, our cells are not getting everything to work as, as optimally as they can. And also toxicity, and we'll get into that a little bit more later, but uh, chemicals and metals that get into our air, food, and water, or that we put on our bodies, and those are things that undermine the cell health as well. So this all comes from lifestyle and poor choices, you know, leads to imbalance. Of course, our genetics are a factor. Uh, the environment also, we'll get into that. 
uh, and then inflammation, infection, immune, you know, those are secondary levels. So let's look at the, and all the symptoms and diseases. So um, healing is an inside job. This uh, is a slide I've used before, but it really is important to think uh, all of us we don't feel well, the Western approach, this is one of the keys to an integrative medicine approach, is when we don't feel well, we think, what can I take to make this go away? If it's a headache or upset stomach or whatever, where the real question is, what's out of balance in my body? What's needed for healing? And, you know, we don't want to treat, we don't want to cover things up ideally, but, you know, for suffering, you know, we will, but, you know, typically we want to see if we can correct things on the inside. And this is, has to do with balancing body chemistry. Those of you who know me know that I've been doing detox programs forever. And uh, to me, it's a good way to get in touch with our body to help rebalance it. Um, the conflicts, the inner conflicts are issues. Uh, Dis-ease, I like that word because it is a lack of ease in a sense, has to do with the struggles and conflicts and how we live, you know, as well as our genetic propensity. But healing, and I wrote about this at the end of Staying Healthy with the Seasons, is about growth and evolution. It's about learning what's in the way of me feeling, you know, ideal. And healing works better from inside out. And that has to do with restoring ourselves with food. You know, think of animals when they don't feel well and they go out and start eating green grass, you know, or, you know, just to start to purify their bodies. All right, so here's a primary cause. And, uh, and Neil, you know, put this together nicely and worked with me on new medicine. So here's just a simple idea. Cell health is in the middle deficiency and toxicity. What surrounds that, you know, is, you know, how we choose to live affects our cellular health, as well as our genetics, what are we, what are we uh, predisposed to, uh, our environment, our chemicals and toxins. So it's just another way of saying, how do we get deficient and, and uh, toxic, you know, and stress and sleep, you know, uh, can affect our, our deficiency. It uses up more nutrients and it uh, affects us. So, uh, the key is, you know, we want to really think about ourselves. And those of you who did, uh, did my uh, spring uh, immune health and spring uh, uh, cleanse program uh, had Sandra Barrett here, and she wrote a whole book on, on cells and you know, the importance of cells and communicating with ourselves and having ourselves communicate with us. And it really is a way of tuning into your body. What does your body need? And that's always, to me, the deepest question in, in looking at in health. So this is, let me say a couple things about epigenetics and environment. And this is a really important topic. Epigenetics refers to the effects or how our lifestyle affects our genetic expression. Uh, you know, we all have, you know, our parents have certain issues that they have high blood pressure or diabetes in the family and all that. So we have maybe a, an increased propensity over, you know, other people to have certain issues come up. And the epigenetics is how we live and diet is the most important. Um, and stress and exercise and fitness and, you know, our brain, all the things that I would be talking about in terms of five keys to staying healthy affect whether things get uh, brought forth or hum humanifest, that I say. Uh, so the environment is also the amount of toxins. We want to lower our toxic uh, level. And in, in uh, my clinic, Preventive Medical Center of Marin in San Rafael, we look at people's toxic levels. We look at their chemical levels. We can look at urine. We work with several labs that can look for hundreds of different chemicals in the body and which ones are high. And that kind of shows us, well, where is our exposure? You know, if you've got a new car, you'll have certain, you know, biochemicals that are elevated. If you use certain hair products or cosmetics, you may have certain ones. So we have all these different places that, um, that toxins can come from. And it's all about choices, you know, what we choose to do. And where we invest our dollars is what we support in the world. All right, secondary causes, you know, I mean, we looked at, we've looked at magazines on the cover, Time Magazine years ago, inflammation is the cause of disease, inflammation is everything, and infection, so you can ask a lot of doctors, uh, you know, what causes disease, and, you know, germs do. Well, they do to a certain degree, but, you know, the healthy body doesn't get sick very easily, and I've seen uh, many of you who are even watching right now, uh, as patients, and when you 
you know, take care of your body and you feel better, you just don't get sick as easily as you used to. And that's common. I've seen that hundreds of times over the years. So the, <clears throat> the inflammation, uh, immune uh, dysfunction, which allows you to get sick more easily, infections, and metabolic dysfunction, <clears throat> those are results of these internal issues, these primary causes, which basically, as I said, it is how we live. And so we want to kind of keep this uh, awareness there that we can lower. If you have aches and pains or you have fatigue or insomnia, which we'll call metabolic dysfunction, or you get sick easily, you can possibly and likely correct that by changing the choices you make, changing the way you live, changing what you eat, how you exercise. It's all about taking care of yourself and that you're going to see that several times uh, in this uh, PowerPoint. All right, so we all know all these diseases and symptoms. You can look around this, the circle here, GI problems, depression, anxiety, you know, mental and emotional issues, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, allergies, asthma. I mean, we could list another hundred of them, and they're all a result of these internal issues, these internal dynamics. And if we keep, if we want to treat from the outside in, um, you know, then we, you know, we can control some of these things. We can manage them. And Western medicine is good at managing disease. A lot of people go to doctors every month or three or six months, check in, make sure their blood pressure is okay. They're, you know, they're taking their medicines. Uh, they're on medicines for cholesterol. Um, so there's ways, you know, to manage disease and give people a little more life and, you know, years to their life, but not necessarily life to their years. I think to me, the life to your years comes from uh, a more natural program to help control these things so that these outcomes don't occur so much. Okay. All right. So that can go in deeper and I'm going to try and leave some time for questions uh, at the end to go in a little bit further. So. Uh, let's come back to the slides. I'm not sure what's happening. LJ is on the screen. All right. So new medicine. So let's just kind of do a little overview here. And I'm going a little faster than I, than I maybe anticipated. But let me just remind you that your health, and there's a lot of definitions of health that I have in new medicine. But it really, when you have energy, when you're functioning well, when you don't wake up with aches and pains, when you have some vitality to, and some enthusiasm for life, you know, I would call that being pretty healthy. Uh, but my basic concept and what I've been saying is how we look and feel uh, is basically a result of how we live, okay? That's our long-term habits. It's our things that we get away with. You know, we have this whole pattern of, you know, yeah, as youngsters, you know, we all like sweets, we all like treats. Uh, we get into teen years, we, you know, we have the teenage diet, which is, you know, pizza and burgers and fries and sodas. And, you know, we can get away with that when we're younger. Not everybody does, but some, a lot of people can. But by the time we get into our later 20s and 30s, we realize that we have to learn some level of discrimination. We cannot keep doing what we've been doing and expect our health to last. And that's really, to me, my focus on preventive medicine, which is, you know, how are you taking care of yourself? What's that going to do? If you keep living this way, what's that going to do? I, I know, uh, you know, my genetics and family patterns, people are overweight, people at high blood pressure, you know, diabetes later in life. If I had kept living and eating the way my family did and the way they fed me, uh, you know, I was the family garbage can. I was like, if something was left, I got to finish it, you know, and they put weight on me and, and all that. But I, when I, you know, I changed that back, you know, 40 some years ago when I did my first cleanse in 75. And I just, you know, I realized that I'm changing what I put in my mouth. And I think that's helped me stay healthier um, and hopefully outlive, you know, at least how, where my dad was. And, you know, so I'm looking for that. I'm getting close to the year he passed. So, um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of paying attention to that and keep exercising and, and taking care of myself. So what affects our health? And I'm just giving you some review. This is all pretty common sense. And it's things that, you know, you've heard me say before, but it's how we eat and how we exercise. If we're sleeping and we're able to deal with stress or think our attitudes, we'll get into this a little bit more, but all this affects our energy, our mood, uh, and whether we have poor or great health. And 
if we want a different result, something needs to change. What is it? That's what you talk to yourself about and all these contributing habits. And that's, you know, one of the things that I'll, you know, I work with people individually on and work in groups is like, what can you do? What's a healthy lifestyle for you? Do you have to give up everything that you like? No, but those of you who have done detoxes with me know you do that temporarily just to see if you feel better. And if you lose weight and your energy is better and your sleep is better and your digestion is better and you have less aches and pains and all these things occur when we do a detox uh, program. And the, to me, that's really where we are empowered to be our own best doctor. All right, so my five keys to staying healthy, um, good nutrition, eating a balanced, healthy diet, not overeating too much, chewing our food well, literally, you know, 30 habits that you, I could list right now of, you know, healthy eating, uh, doing a balanced, consistent, uh, and a variety of exercises so you're not just limited to one thing, which tends to stress the body differently learning to relax and manage stress and learning how to deal with emotional upset, learning how to get along with your loved ones, with your neighbors, with your coworkers. <clears throat> it's all something to learn. Uh, I write about that a lot in new medicine about dealing with, in, you know, cause relationships are where we all get challenged as much as any other area. So, and that's an area to deal with and then stress and uh, let's come back one more as well. Um, yeah, so we, we, you know, we want to sleep, 50% of people don't sleep well. Uh, so we want to make sure that we know how to rest and sleep. And if we're not sleeping well, the question is what not, what can I take to sleep better? Which there's a lot of things you can do. It's not a bad question, but the question is why aren't I sleeping well? What can I do differently? Can I re rest more? Can I get off my computer earlier? Can I get electromagnetics out of my bedroom? You know? And the key is healthy attitudes, which is being mindful, being aware of what we're doing in our own heads. All right, so my five keys uh, lifestyle review is available on uh, through my website, elsonhasmd.com. Uh, there's a link right there for you. It's also on Thinkific, the platform for those of you uh, who are looking at this program on Thinkific if you're not attending live right now. Um, so that's something you can do, it's free, and it's a really good way for you to look at your own health and to say, okay, where's my weak areas? Is it my exercise program? Is it my diet? Is it my sleep? Is it my attitude? You know, and I really like people to kind of work on that attitude place. So here we have attitude is, is core. And I just wrote a quote yesterday that I'll share with you in a sec. But, uh, you know, these are, to me, the, the keys. And attitude is maybe the more unique one when you read other people who looked into health and healing. You know, they'll have nutrition and exercise, sleep, stress. But attitude, what we have, we have control over what we do in, inside our head. And uh, there's so many uh, issues that we have uh, that is a factor, you know. And so attitude is there. All right, so you know, we want more healing attitudes. Uh, in the bottom I wrote, an attitude of gratitude goes a long way. Or uh, uh, Gratitude, what did I just say? I did at a dinner, holding hands prayer. I said, gratitude is a grateful attitude. But we can alter what goes on in our, in our heads. You know, we, have, we all have a story, you know, and if we stick to that story in our brains, it's, it can become an issue. But we want to be, you know, loving to ourselves. We want to be positive as best we can. Uh, worry doesn't help us so much. Uh, we can worry about something on and on and on, and it just stresses our body. It, it uses up nutrition. It uses up energy. So we really want to do. You know, what I started working at back after I started becoming a, a health doctor is um, you know, just working on, and the one attitude I think is most important, and some of you have heard me say this before, is uh, this is the only body I have. I'm going to treat it with love. And if I do that, well, guess what? I'm going to start thinking about what am I putting into my body? What am I eating? Am I getting my exercise? Am I getting out in the sunshine daily? Am I being loving and kind with everybody in my life as best I can, you know? It's going to motivate us to eat better and exercise more and sleep better and manage stress and keep our relationships healthy. So, you know, I think the, the, the getting up in the morning, 
and, and, and gratitude and kind of almost doing that or doing a family if you're having family dinner just saying what you're what are you grateful for um you know just sharing that and just really expressing that that gratitude in your life is important so here's a few quotes um the greatest discovery of any generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering the attitudes of their minds of a choice i think other people have said that this is a quote i just wrote yesterday after uh class with uh, Robert after our Qigong and we talk about life and the elements and everything. But much of our mental chaos and stress comes from our story. Whatever it is we're telling ourselves, you know, let it go. It's all changeable. And I think it's um, important that we don't stick to our story. I have lots of patients who so they just have a story. And uh, if I try and give them other options or other possibilities, they just stick to their story and they're going to do it. I'm uh, constantly stressed. I don't have enough money. I don't, whatever it is. I mean, there's a thousand things we could say. So that's where your attitude has that potential. Uh, last talk I, I did uh, last month, we talked about the attitude's attitude. You know, are you willing to stop? Just to, just hear, to step back. I mean, to me, I think the best way to look at our, our mental health is to observe it and to step back and watch what happens in our mind. And if we start to get negative or we start to go into that old story or the, uh, you know, unforgiveness of, you know, somebody, what somebody did to us or, you know, with us, you know, those are areas that we can really shift. So are you willing to just say, stop? stop john stop betty stop you know whatever whatever your name is and just talk to yourself and say i don't have to do that you know because a lot of times you know the last quote here is our health is important and essential yet we often don't realize this until we lose it so we got to take care of ourselves it matters so we, we're healthy in our minds you know our bodies tend to be healthier and so there's a lot more quotes we can have too but you know the key here is changing habits um, you know, what I've talked about before and through the five keys and through um, how do we support uh, healing in the body is, you know, basically taking care of our lifestyle. Uh, what's it take to change? This is something we did a whole class on and, you know, probably we'll do that in the upcoming courses is how do we change? How do we do that? How do we, you know, at the bottom, you make a plan and you make a commitment. That's key. But it's hard to under it's hard to change these things if we don't deal with the the psycho emotional mental aspects of um, of whatever it is we're doing. Uh, I have people all the time. I look at in my questionnaire. I have you know how much you know caffeine, alcohol, sugar. You know the snacks, sugar, nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, chemicals. How much of that are we using daily, and can we let go of that? So we have to address these underlying emotions and our attitude. Some people will, you know, if I say, well, what, are you willing to take a, a couple of weeks and just kind of get off sugar and caffeine and alcohol and cannabis and wheat and dairy and do kind of what we do, a lot of you have done with me is a detox program. Are you willing to do that and just see how you feel? Give your body a little test. Love it in a different way. But it takes a willpower and it takes making a plan and following through on it, you know, and having somebody to support you like a group or your loved ones or, you know, do it with your friends, do it with your coworkers, you know, do a, do a plan. But the, the, the detox programs like the one I mentioned where you just, you know, you can do the detox diet, which is a lot of veggies and, you know, where you just get away from, you know, your substances that you're hooked on. Uh, and overusing and just do a cleanup. Lots of veggies is, is, the, is the key for most of those uh, areas. Okay. All right. I'm taking a breath and we're just going to talk more about new medicine. And, and I want to, I do, uh, I'm coming through here. I want to leave a little time for questions and comments from all of you. Um, okay. All right. I'll continue. All right, what else do we have? New medicine, okay. All right, let's talk. I sent out an email, uh, I think most of you got it, about the doctor-patient relationship. This is another whole chapter in, uh, in New Medicine book. And to me, this is an important part. I mean, I have uh, 
you know, I get along with most people. I do practice it as my way uh, um, of being a family doctor for, you know, almost 50 years now. Uh, I try to keep love in my heart, be kind, uh, be supportive, but I'm also willing to be direct with people and tell them, you know, you're undermining your health and, you know, it's time to, you know, sometimes kick some butt a little bit. But, you know, to me, the cooperation you have and the relationship you have with your primary doctor or any of your practitioners, it may not be a medical doctor, maybe an acupuncturist, chiropractor, but, you know, it's that quality, those, that quality that makes people light up a little bit and feel like they're really being cared for. And we'll look at that in a minute, but, you know, there's lots of qualities to me that, you know, make the difference between a positive healing experience and a negative or stressful one. And a lot of times it's not even the, the practitioner, it's the office staff. They're, they're not, you know, friendly, they're not cooperative, you know, and so people get hassled, you know, or the billing department or, you know, it's just the way every person in my office knows that they're, you know, they treat, you know, all our patients respectfully and listen to what they have to say. No, not everybody's easy. Some people are, are, when they're hurting, they're, they're not nice, you know. I mean, my staff gets, you know, gets, you know, chewed out you know or people are mad or various things that happens you know not not that commonly but it's that can happen so what are what are the factors that uh, are important to you and i know a lot of people i mean i'm one of the few alternative or integrative practices that takes insurance and medicare um, and that's often important because sometimes people will choose a medicine over um a supplement program that might cost 50 or hundred dollars a month uh, because they don't, they, you know, their drugs are covered, but their supplements are not. So, but your food is not covered either. And that's where you really can make a, a big difference. So right, let's look at this beautiful chart that Neil put together and uh, you know, the doctor patient relationship. So again, each of these, each of these uh, categories here, shared beliefs. I mean, it's good. It's ideal if you see somebody that, thinks like you do. And if they think that you're wacky because you're doing homeopathy or you're doing herbs or you're, you're doing chakra balancing, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to be supported there. And, you know, the doctor is just like, no, here's what I do. I had, you know, I just got an email. Uh, one of my patients did a sleep study and found that the doctor wasn't really uh, giving him the time to explain things and you know so she kind of dismissed him and he kind of wanted to see somebody else so and so i i sent him um i sent them a, a copy of this chart just to say you know it takes a lot of different factors to make it they could work but you know a lot of specialists particularly are just they're really focused on their practice they're all very busy and you know so they don't really have the time to take you know to take that extra bit of space for people and i you know i try and you know i pride myself on I, you know i practice every day even though i'm in the office only two days a week um i call people back usually within the day uh i call people on the weekends i called half a dozen people this morning to say okay how are you doing i called them prescriptions that were needed uh but it's it's important so be compassionate uh be present for people I mean, this is an important topic for any kind of relationship and especially, you know, love, you know, loved ones is be present for them. Women, that's the most common thing uh, I believe they say about their partner is what they need from, you know, their, their man basically or their partner is to be present and to be, you know, be attentive and be respectful. And obviously you want a doctor that knows what they're doing and, you know, has some experience and that they're confident in what they do, but they're you know, they're a bit humble. You have a connection with somebody. I mean, I, you know, I've had a lot of patients, you know, 20, 30 years or more, and I know them. I know them from their younger days. I know them, what they're experienced. I know, you know, if they've been in married or in relationship or they have kids. So that, you know, that part of being the old time family doctor is so, you know, uh, part of the joy of, of you know my practice you know somebody who has integrity is honest with you is you know that you can trust and you know you feel like you can say things and have it be confident you know have them be confidential um and to me a, a doctor go, goes back to the original idea doctor from the latin word docere which is teacher 
you know, and so to me, I've been a health educating uh, family doctor, you know, my whole career. And obviously you want a doctor you can afford, but sometimes when you're sick, you just got to, you know, bite the bullet and, and do things that you might, you know, have to stretch a little bit for. But, um, you know, hopefully as many of these things. So some of you, you know, maybe write in your, 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 your top one. I mean, if you want to, uh, they could do a little chat, right, Angela? They can just, uh, you know, what, what you, uh, you know, if you want to type in the chat room. I'm not sure what's going on with the LJ being always present when you kind of come back. But anyway, I'm not sure if everybody sees that. Nope, well, you're, uh, only you are seeing that for some reason. And yes, people can chat um, in the right-hand column. Just click the chat button at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, and just uh, type in, you know, what, you know, what's your, you know, what you, is most important to you in a, in, and your doctor. And just take a moment for that. And then. And you have a couple of questions that are in the chat already. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing okay time wise. So let's see. Um, Mark says, my roommate in college, El oh, Elson was my roommate in college. <laughs> okay, so I remember how we ate at that point. It's great to see how much he is helping people in his life and his work is inspiring to us all. <laughs> well, that's nice. Oh, thanks, Mark. And then Eva asked, what about mental and emotional detox? Um, yeah. Well, that's a lot of what we're talking about. I mean, those, uh, a lot of the symptoms around there one of my favorite sections I've written and I have not published it yet is called mood and energy disorders. So I want you to think of, because most of my patients have some level of fatigue, insomnia, depression, and anxiety. So part of the, part of the way I'm kind of tying that all together is those are things that have to do with too much energy and, you know, intensity. Uh, but it's like four circles that kind of intertwine in the middle. So if you get too much energy, you can have anxiety and insomnia. If you're kind of more withdrawn and lower energy, you have fatigue and depression. But they're connected all to the, 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 the stimulation. One of the things I wrote about and uh, on Thickific is our, my Regain Your Natural Energy program, which is all, you know, it goes into this in depth, um, you know, which is to get away from your stimulants and your sedatives and try and get a new balance in your life and then there's a lot of nutrients that you can be taking too that will help balance that, that that mental emotional state you know but if people have serious mental issues then they you know they need again a, a comprehensive program that that's both you know psychotherapy uh, nutritional approaches medicines even so yeah i think it's it's important but it's you don't really separate the mental emotional from the physical and at least in my mind that they're all connected and most physical diseases have a mental emotional component and most bad habits have a mental emotional component so when we're when we're following a certain thing what we talked about we we can't really you know heal and some of our lifestyle habits without addressing the um you know, the psycho-emotional components. So a couple of people did respond in chat to your question about what is important to them in the doctor-patient relationship. Um, Kitty said, teamwork is so important to me in a healthy relationship at your office. She appreciated that. Mm -hmm. And Carol asked if your birthday's coming up soon. She said, you are her number one doctor. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my birthday's coming up in a few weeks. Yep. And, uh, yeah. And then we do have a question. Um, someone said, considering we're all washing our hands so much more due to COVID-19, what is the best hand sanitizer to use that is not toxic? Is antibacterial soap okay? And what about rubbing alcohol? What would you suggest? Uh, you can use rubbing alcohol if you do it too much. Uh, I mean, I have a couple of solutions that are soap with alcohol in them. Uh, and uh, a lot of the things feel kind of greasy, but uh, too much rubbing alcohol will dry out your hands a lot, so, so you have to be careful there. Um, there's a spray that I have, which is kind of sodium hypochloride, which is not related to bleach, but not bleach. Um, you know, it's hard to say what, you just have to try a bunch of things. But uh, I have these little uh, swabs that are mainly alcohol too, that I do that. Or if I am in my car, I'll, I'll you know, wipe my steering wheel down a little bit and stuff like that. But um, yeah, alcohol is probably the overall best one. That's what most of them are, are, are containing now. 
All right, so a couple of other people responded to your uh, question about what's important to them in providers, mm -hmm. and you can read those in the chat. And someone else has a question, and then we can get back to the slides, and then we'll do Q&A afterwards. Uh, but someone asked, is there a good alternative to taking antibiotics? What do you think of MMS? M uh, methyl, uh, MMS? I'm not sure what, what you're referring to. Well, um, okay, so, I mean, yes, there are all alternatives to taking antibiotics, but if you're really sick and you have a bacterial infection, antibiotics will work probably better than things. But I have in... Um, in Detox Diet and my Staying Healthy with Nutrition book, a whole natural antibiotics that are herbs and supplements. There's you know certain aminos, but mostly herbal herbal treatments. Some people use a silver, like people with sinus infections will use silver spray, um, oregano oil, um, you know, echinacea, golden seal. You know, have some effect. Um, there's a lot, a lot of them. So okay. All right, so we'll go back to the slides and let people ask some questions afterwards. Okay. All right, so, you know, this comes back to natural medicine. To me, you know, nature is our best healer. We, without nature, there is no healing. Um, you know, we need sun, air, water, earth, you know, and, you know, the connection with the cycles and, our, you know, really living our life more in harmony. And that was the whole idea of staying healthy with the seasons and the course that I'll be starting in September, this year long program about really staying and honoring the earth and connecting to the cycles and the seasons. Uh, to me, this connects to our health. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, to me, doctors that are teaching health basics and and uh, eating according to the seasons, that's you know, part of the whole message, Sarah. So, and here, you know, my message has always been, <clears throat> eat from nature, eat locally. Uh, nature provides food that helps balance us. <clears throat> so, you know, and basically the whole idea is when it's cold outside, you eat foods that give you more fuel and warm your body and when it's hot outside you think things that cool you down it's pretty common sense so that's why you know you know doctors sometimes like you know belittle it but it probably is the most important nutritional message that we have um you know so you still have to eat locally and go to you know, grow your own garden ideally shop at farmers markets um you know and just really healing again healing from your inside out is part of the key So, all right, so just, I want to take a moment now. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, sell you, you know, I'm not trying to sell you too much, but, you know, I just want you to know that this, this, the time we're in right now and the way we're teaching and learning is really a value. So I've put together, you know, a lot of what I've been doing. So my first, the first class we're starting on September 12th which will go into the depth of staying healthy with the seasons. And it's called All Seasons Health Plan. It's a year long program where you can sign up seasonally and we're getting that together. But uh, I'm gonna do another talk on August 22nd, uh, four weeks from today. I think that's four weeks from today. And uh, you know we'll go from there. But it's gonna go into the depths of, let's go back one please. Um, it's gonna go into the depths of seasons. And you know if you look through staying healthy with the seasons, you know that each season has different topics that I address. Some is, you know, sexual health, some is energy and color therapy. And um, there's, you know, there's different topics that are both metaphysical as well as, you know, really physical, practical. And so, you know, we're, and, and also the program will include, those of you who've done detox programs with me, will include the, the, you know, seasonal or, you know, maybe three times a year, we'll do a detox program. So that's coming up. Um, and then the next one, I've had requests for this hair area, Dr. Sun, which is uh, my work with Bethany in, in schools. And, um, you know, there's this whole metaphysical side of me that, you know, I don't really use so much in my, in my, in my family practice, but I do work with it personally <clears throat> a lot in the creative process. And, you know, so there's this, uh, I'm calling it evolutionary medicine because it really is taking medicine to another level and looking at, uh, besides seasons and numerology and, and symbols and astrology and, our, you know, how, who we are, you know, we get into those different levels. 
Um, and I want to work with people on a creative process. You working with new moon and full moon and, and that cycle. Um, and that will be more um, starting into 2021. Um, and then I'm also going to be have an add on for people in these courses or a separate program <clears throat> that I'm calling personal health journey. And that will be doing a couple questionnaires with me and then an individual consultation. It's kind of what I do in practice in a sense, but this is more, uh, I'll be able to do it Zoom one-on-one -on -one with you uh, if, if you're interested in doing that. And you know, we'll do it, we'll make a plan, we'll look at your lifestyle, the five keys to staying healthy and a questionnaire that I have that looks at your health issues. Uh, it wouldn't be for medical treatment, it would be more for, uh, your whole lifestyle and making a plan for you. And then we do a follow-up uh, and adapt that as we need. <clears throat> and then this, as I said, this is going to be an add-on or, um, or a program, <clears throat> excuse me, but it, it certainly will make a difference in your life. I'm, I'm pretty certain. And then here's just uh, my website info and a picture of staying healthy with new medicine. And thank you all. All right, so now we can call on some people since there were quite a few questions in the chat if you would like to ask Dr. Haas yourself instead of having me read your questions. So let's see, I think I saw Vivian. Um, would you like to ask your question? Let me find you here. Okay, thank you. Um, so I wrote, I recently heard of Coldzyme, a cold medicine from Sweden not available in the US yet is effective in combating COVID-19. It has trypsin, which is from Atlantic cod. Have you heard of this? I have not. Okay. Uh, so it sounds interesting, I can look into it. Uh, you can leave me a message or send me an email, uh, Vivian, and uh, let me know where to look it up. But what's it called? It's called Coldzyme, C-O-L-D-Z-Y-M-E. Okay. And it has trypsin, T-R-Y-P-S-I-N. Which, which is a digestive enzyme, basically. So that may have some inflammation. So you think, it, so there's touting it as helpful for COVID? Yes. All right, I will look it up. All right, thank you. Thanks for that question, Vivian. Samantha, would you like to ask your question? And just unmute yourself. So where are you? and start your video, please. And if you don't want to, I'll read it. <laughs> uh, it says, first, thanks for teaching us today all these and all these years. Uh, most important to her for a physician is knowledge, respect, and all others as a rule, one that practices daily what they teach. And obviously, Dr. Haas practices what he teaches. He's in his 70s and looks great. <laughs> Uh, luckily, I feel good too. So, uh, you know, I'm not perfect for sure. Uh, I mean, I still have, uh, you know, my food things. I'm always challenged with that and eating too much. And, uh, you know, but I usually make good choices with food and I don't eat four legged animals. I don't eat much dairy. I try to stay away from uh, too much grains because that's my, you know, you learn for yourself. You know, that, that, that's a little bit of my weakest weakness because if I start making too much rice or having bread in the house, you know, even, um, even if it's a gluten-free, you know, healthy bread, I still have to watch, you know, how much I do. All right. And Eva, she's the one who sent us an email earlier. Eva, ask your question, please. Oh, yeah. I was just recently hospitalized for an acute episode of mania. I've been trying to manage this Mm -hmm. without meds for years. Like the first time I ever experienced one was in 2015. Uh -huh. And then now another hospitalization just just this last week. And so what I, what I noticed was that it seems like there's a positive feedback loop with communication. Like I think that I could have stopped the manic attack mm -hmm. had I just shut my mouth. <laughs> and so that's why I've been asking you yeah. about like silence yeah. and detox yeah. from social media and things like that. And I wondered what you might've said. Well, I would just say, yeah, I would, I'd want to listen to what that self-talk is happening and see if you can calm, calm down and uh, rest. I mean, 
you know, there's a lot of herbs and things that can calm things down, but uh, let's, I don't want to do too much on an individual consultation here, but I think uh, like anything, whether it's a depression or, or, or mania, you know, when you, you just observe what we were talking about earlier, you observe what your brain is saying, because you seem like you're pretty wise already. And there's part of you, what's, what's uncontrollable. There's something that you're not able to control. So what, you know, is there a way to tune into that and what's coming up for you? There's always, you know, when things start to, you know, come forth, you know, there's usually internal things and it might be really old stuff. It might be childhood stuff. Um, yeah, that's why I work with uh, a medical intuitive in my office too, who kind of can re give people, you know, look at their energies and, you know, her background is traditional Chinese medicine. So we see things energetically. So that will be interesting if you want to email me or, or be in touch, it'd be good to kind of look at that a little more deeply, Ava. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for that question. Um, Colette, you had the question about antibiotics. Um, would you like to come on screen? Oh, okay. Sure. There she is. Uh, hi. Hey there, Angel. <laughs> yes, and thank you for all your many years. And uh, yes, every time I've spoken to your office, and that does make a difference. Uh, so I also love about what you said about your story and how important that is. And, you know, of course, that gets into the biology of belief and everything else. And so whatever you're you keep telling yourself, and I, I think particularly at this time on the planet, uh, we are meant to really see how our thoughts, our words influence how we're feeling, how we're being in the world. So I love that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so yeah, on the antibiotic thing. Uh, so I'm completely drug free. I'm 64 and i'm completely drug free which i'm very happy about uh and and once in a while something comes up though where you know that just antibiotics antibiotics they want you to take antibiotics or something so any way i could avoid that would be yeah i mean uh, the thing is you um, part of it is if you catch saying if you start to become unwell for anything you know, you got to tune into immediately, you know, and that's when I do like, I'll start, if I think I got exposed to somebody, I'll just start eating cloves of garlic, you know, maybe dip in honey, I'll do oregano oil, I'll do extra vitamin A, I do vitamin C every couple hours. So you get on it, you can even do a steam or sauna if that's available to you. <clears throat> you get on it pretty quickly. And usually you can avoid it. You know, the only time antibiotics are really a saving grace is if there's a deeper bacterial inf infection, you know, and it's back, particularly bronchial, uh, can be sinuses as well, and people are really suffering, and then, you know, it's worth doing it. Or the common one, I just uh, treated a friend yesterday who's got, who had a tick bite, you know, he had a tick that had a little blood out, you know, you'd be safe, you want to avoid Lyme, you know, yeah, you take yeah. oxycycline for, you know, 10 days, two weeks, you know, even, so... You know, it, it's hard, but I think you've done pretty well as long as you kind of take care of yourself. You should be able to avoid antibiotics. I personally haven't taken antibiotics in 40 plus years. I can't remember when I did it last, you know, um, because I get on top of things when, if I start to feel bad, you know, when I start to feel some, most of the things we're getting are viral anyway. <clears throat> so. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Okay. You no, know, I was thinking of like bladder infection or something. Oh yeah, like that. that's that's a different thing. Uh, you know, the interesting with bladder infection, especially in women, is um, yeah, sometimes even one or two doses of an antibiotic. But for bladder, you can do cranberry and hydration and demanos, you know, which is helpful. But if it really gets to be too bad, you can even do a couple three days of an antibiotic. You don't have to do a long course. Okay. So, so, Even though they want you to take 10 days. Yeah, well, yeah, less so. Kaiser, Kaiser did some studies. Sometimes two or three days is enough. So, you know, I think it, it's pretty common. Yeah. Again, the earlier you get on it, the better. Right. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that question, Colette. If anyone would like to ask a question, we have about five minutes left. You can either raise your hand. Um, if you click on the participant button at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a raise hand button on the right when you click more, or you can type it in the chat. And um, Tom, you commented 
but I don't see you in the list. Tom, if you unmute yourself and speak up. Uh, oh, there you are. And then Jeff has a question too. Oh, somebody did raise their hand. Okay. All right, Jeff. Go ahead and unmute. And you can ask your question. Hi, Allison. Hi there. So um, I, I, I want to ask a little bit more about the antibiotic part. Um, you, you know, a while back, I, I had a confrontation or consultation with you around a tooth that had to be extracted that was, you know, that had some infection. Mm -hmm. so I had to take antibiotics and amoxic amoxicillin then. Yeah, yeah, that's another common way to reason because, it, you know, if it gets deeper or gets into your bone, that's a nightmare, you know. So, yeah, go on. So, so I'm getting ready to have some implants and as a common practice, right? you know, they do that, you know, seven days. And I had a little reaction to amoxicillin, so they're giving me something different. But, okay. you know, it's, it's about a seven day, take it three times a day. Right, they want to do it the seven days before your procedure. No, it's actually um, the day of and then seven days okay. after. Well, that's being protective, you know. It's, it's kind of what medicine does, you know. You could probably do a couple of days and just see how your body's responding to the, to the pro, you know, pr program and not do it. I mean, it's hard to say don't do it at all because if you got, you know, your implant infected, you know, that wouldn't be very good. So... Right, uh, especially because it's, yeah. it's something you can't see until, you know, later on and then there's... Yeah, but some people would do, you know, re oregano oil. You can even do oregano oil drops and put it in wa put water in your mouth and put a few drops in and slosh it around. I mean, you know, you could do some more natural disinfectant, even, uh, you know, I uh, would say even a little shot of, you know, a little tequila and rinse your mouth out with that. I mean, that's pretty disinfecting too, so... Okay, that's uh, a good you, you know, I can talk about it more. You, you, you email me or text me. Okay, let me know. that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks for that question, Jeff. If anyone else has a question, raise your hand. We have a couple of minutes left. Um, Eva typed in another question. Um, what do you think of medical medium, the celery juice, etc.? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, celery juice got it got popular. It's a little less popular uh, this last year. Um, you know, I think celery juice is good. I think the medical medium has some good insights into health and healing. Uh, you know, I don't know his, you know, all his stuff very well, but uh, I think uh, I think anybody who drinks a green juice every day is going to probably get some benefit from that. So, you know, that's my that's my plan. All right. So we don't have any other questions okay. um, here, but someone sent one in earlier about the relationship between how would you recommend going about getting practitioners without you know costing a fortune in natural Eastern and Western medicines to integrate and work with mm -hmm. you. Right. Well, that's the kind of a, a transition we're in. There's a lot of practitioners, medical doctors per se, that uh, uh, not a lot of them are on insurance yet, but they, they've studied their integrative medicine and functional medicine. You know, it's a longer process. It's a different way of looking at the body in terms of body systems. I think it's just an evolution. I mean, now compared to when I started doing, uh, you know, natural and integrative medicine in the seventies, you know, and nutrition and detox. When I, when I was first practicing, all, there were doctors didn't think nutrition had much to do with health and disease. You know, the GI doctors didn't think it had to do, you know, with problems in the gut. You know, and we've come a long way since then. So, and then when my nutrition book came out in '92, it's like do you have that much to say about nutrition? Yeah. Yeah. And I have a lot more too. So, you know, there's a, it's really an important aspect. So I think it's just kind of a continual evolution. I think if, if people, if patients are kind of asking for that, you know, it's going to, it's going to come, you know, you know, build it and they will come. So I think, uh, yeah, for all of us who, you know, uh, you know, even in California, in some states, nat NDs, nat nat nature paths, are covered insurance-wise. In California, not so easily. So there's still kind of this whole hold on the, the Western medicine approach. So, you know, again, we'll all live, you know, we're all going to live long enough to see a continued kind of evolution there. All right. So, thanks. We have one last question. A longtime participant, Peggy, would you like to come on? Yes. Do I need to, do I need to do anything? No, nope, we're good, Peggy. Okay. This is a question that was actually asked before, um, which is how would you treat coronavirus if somebody tested positive? 
Um, <laughs> probably would. Well, I would, I think the inhaled steroids would be one, especially if it was respiratory. Mm -hmm. I have in my uh, office drawer, I have some, um, you know, Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine. Uh, I have some of my staff would say I would take that in a second if I if I started getting sick. Um, you know, I probably would just do similar to what I'm doing. I would do increase C and A and uh, you know some natural you know antiviral things. You know, um, nobody's really talking about an antiviral like uh, a cyclovir or Valtrex or one of those things, but I think they may have some role as well. But again, I have, I have uh, let's see, it's four months now. I have tested 50 people, including I just had, my son and I just had, you know, nasal swabs and blood tests. And, you know, I still have not seen a positive result. And here, this is in Northern California. So it's, you know, a little, a little lighter here than it is in Texas or New York, but still, um, yeah, so I'm not sure what I would do. I think I would look at what the symptoms were and kind of adapt there. Uh -huh. Thanks for asking, Peggy. Okay. Thank you. All right, and thank you all for coming to uh, to class. And I'm going to do another class talking a little bit more about uh, the programs and evolution and kind of the creative process for all of us and how we really go about adapting to our own health needs and creating you know a real good healing program and so that'll be i think august 22nd so we'll be sending out some info about that thank you all for joining us today thank you angela and neil for all your help all right thank you dr haas and if everyone wants to unmute yourselves you can say goodbye <laughs> goodbye thank bye. you thank you thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, make sure you have a good night. Thanks so much.